weekly webcast that we've been doing for everybody. These are normally just for our Kelby One Pro members, but during this time where we're all stuck inside and since we're all in this together, we're opening these to everybody. So if you know a photographer who would like to come in and join us for this photo critique session, uh, we would love to have them. So please just send them a tweet or an email or a text and say, come on and join because everybody's everybody's open. So welcome, everybody. Welcome to my co-host, Mr. Eric Kuna. Hey, Scott. How's it going? Well, you know, it's going pretty well, considering we're all stuck inside. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. We're here. We're based in Florida, and we're on a super stuck inside uh, mode here. So we're going to mm-hmm. still roll on. Yes. I'd rather be doing on. creative stuff than focusing on on the other junk. Exactly. So um, yeah. So um, this show is all about um, people submitting their images uh, to get critiqued. Uh, I think what we're going to see today, and like we, when we do these a lot, we see a. Uh, a lot of times it's a good learning experience for everybody watching because we see repeating patterns, things that happen a lot with people's images where if we focus on these little things here and there, uh, we can really make leaps and bounds with our images. So first, thanks to everybody who submitted their images because we know that that is not a hard, that, that is a hard thing. It is very hard um, to have our images critiqued. Uh, it's very hard to... Uh, Put ourselves out there and be vulnerable but that's the way we learn a lot of times uh you know i know scott and i do that all the time with each other i'll send him images he'll send me images what do you think and really honestly you're looking for an honest feedback you're looking for that genuine what what is wrong with my image because that's the way we improve so this ep- this uh, episode is going to be all about that Yep, and we we've got tons of entries. Now, we had literally hundreds of uh, hundreds of people that that submit. Uh we I, I look I look through as many of them as I can. Uh, a lot of times people don't understand how to upload images, <laughs> and so I get the names of their photos on their drive. <laughs> so uh I got a lot of broken links. I got a lot of ones that say you do not have permission to see these photos and you're locked out. So but even with all that, there's still hundreds and hundreds that I, that I go through. And and so if, if we didn't pick yours, understand there are hundreds of people that sent in, hundreds, number one. And number two is I don't, I don't just pick good ones and I don't just pick bad ones. I try to pick ones where I think we can help not just the person that submitted the images, but everybody watching. So like Eric said, you might see a pattern of things that you're like, Oh, I got to try that next time. Or, Ooh, I'm glad I didn't make that mistake. Or, Ooh, I've been making that mistake. So that's, that's uh, kind of a nutshell of what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to give honest critiques. So if the images need work, we're going to tell you. And if they don't, we'll tell you as well. Um, also some, in some cases I wasn't able to download the images because you had turned on protection where I can't do them. So I can't download them. So I had to make screen capture. So sometimes you'll see navigation things on screen. Uh, we don't generally mention the photographer's names, but sometimes if you put a watermark on them, you're going to see who the photographer was. So things like that. Um, there's also, um, you'll, well, you'll see all kinds of patterns today and sometimes you'll see, Oh, we did ask you to submit three photos. A lot of people just sent one. Some people sent 50. <laughs> so uh, if you, it, it's, it goes much better for you and your chances improve if you actually read the instructions and send in just three photos and make them downloadable and all that stuff. Without further ado, we have a lot of images to cover today. So uh, let's, let's start off with our first one here and uh, make sure we can see my screen. There we go. All right, so this is our first image, and I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna I generally look through all three images, and then we go back and, and make our critique. So this is our our first one here, and our second one, and our third one. Well, I I can tell you what I like that the photographer here is doing. There's a couple of things that I like. Number one is they're shooting at the right time. They're shooting in beautiful light. All three shots are taken in nice late, late daylight. So you're getting close to sunset. So you're going to have nice warm colors. Um, there's also a reasonable amount of clouds in the sky. So you've got something to hold the color. Otherwise it's just, it's blue and then it's orange and then it's gone. So that's, that's nice. Um, also I like that they're, 
their photography and their post-processing is consistent. This looks like the same photographer took all three shots. You don't go, it looks like three disparate photographers, which you will see a lot today. Uh, this one looks like the same photographer took all these. Uh, this first shot is my favorite. Uh, I like the way it leads you to the ocean. You have the leading lines of these two things. And leading lines are basically things that lead you into the photograph. And I think this does it very nicely. However, is it just me? Or is that horizon line a little crooked? Let's check it out. Because that is a, a very... There it is, is crooked. crooked. I'm going to go right down the horizon line. And it's going to be a commonality between these. Yep. Yep. Because I noticed that one's crooked too. (laughs) Come on. That's like a a very basic thing. Look, here I'm going right down the horizon line. Now when I hit, you can see how crooked it is. Come on. You got to, that's like a basic thing. You're too good of a photographer to not be looking at your horizon lines. Are all three got crooked horizon lines? Look at the third one. It's going up a little to the right. <laughs> so fix your horizon lines. That's that's a big one. Um, I would say this. This is certainly my favorite. I think you did a nice job with the leading lines. In this one, the dock is kind of competing with the boat. Especially when you have two things in a photo, you know, people seem to like, and they've done psychological studies, odd numbers of things. So if you had a boat or if you had a boat, a dock and something else, <laughs> like an odd number, um, the, I think the light is nice on the boat, but the dock is actually, I think if you'd simplified this photo and, and it composed it so you didn't see the boat, because you got, you know, the, the mooring lines coming off there and you got the rope on the deck and you've, you know, it's, it's not helping. I think that you, in the spot that you were standing, there's a better shot, but it's still a good shot. So, you know, don't get me wrong, but I think that there's still a good one there. This one, this, I don't even know where to look. Am I supposed to look at the big fat rock on the right? It's not very attractive. It, so you do have a foreground, which is good, but it's not a good foreground. It's There's all these different rocks, and my eye is drawn to this big, ugly one on the right. These two are much stronger. This one's kind of, it, it's lacking focus. What do, what do you think, Mr. Kuna? Um, yeah, actually, my favorite one's the, the first one. Uh, I think because, again, um, yeah. with the dock, it's got that leading lines. Um, I, I probably would have... Uh, again, um, with the composition, I think throughout all three of these photos, there is a foreground, but what there isn't is a prominent foreground element, meaning something that's drawing in the photo, like something that I'm focusing on drawing. And again, this one's probably my favorite because I think the dock is that foreground element or the, yeah, you know, the leading. This, this does yeah. have a, the foreground. Yeah, object. that's probably the most leading of the foreground. That I agree with the, the boat and then the boat's cut off. You can't really see it. It's not prominent again in the frame. And then you're kind of fighting with the other one. Um, I agreed. And the first thing I picked up was the crooked horizon lines. Um, but like you said, I mean, there's a lot of good also going with it. Uh, but that's yeah. like that first, that last one there. That's the problem is the rocks. Um, the rocks are kind of like um, there's not. I don't know what which one to look at and where to look in the photo. Um, and that's a big thing with landscape photography is you want to lead yep. your uh, viewer through the photo. You almost want to have layers in the photo that lead you all the way to the background. You know, and the, the and, and the first one does have that. The next is it, close. The, and the, the third one, the best. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it just needs so. some clarity. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Okay. So, I mean, the exposure's right and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this one, I think, is certainly the most interesting of the three. But, okay, that's a building and, and there's a reflection. It, it's not... I don't know how to say it. There's nothing at the least bit wow about this. If you were walking downtown and you looked up and you saw the reflection, oh, there's a reflection. Click. It's kind of, 
Yeah, I don't want to say it's, it's snapshotty because it doesn't. It's a good photo. It, I mean, it's good. Yeah, it's not. It's not a bad photo, but it's not a really good photo. It's not a snapshot, yeah. but it's not something that's ever going to make anybody go, "Ooh." It's just kind of like, "Mm-hmm." This is nice. I don't know what I'm looking at, which is not good. It, maybe this is something over here. I don't know if it's rocks, if it's a duck, it's something. Yeah, so it this needed, is nothing. It, it needed something, right? It, it just, needed something that you yeah, can uh, place yourself. It, it's so abstract that it's nothing, you know? Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm what looking at. Um, this one is kind of nice, and it just seems like it should have been a wide photo, but maybe because of whatever it is that's over here, you didn't want to go wide. Um, but I think there's something there, and it looks like you're shooting up the side of a building or something. But I think that's kind of interesting. This is just kind of, I was walking around downtown on a photo walk and there's a shot and this is, so we got a little bit of work to do. All right. So, but there is a, there's an intrinsic lack of quality for snapshots. These aren't snapshots. Mm -hmm. So the, these are that next level up. I mean, they're, they're photos, but I think you need a little more. What am I trying to show? Like, look for just more interesting things. These are just, they're not that. The first one, it has some interest. That's just, you know, we see that all day. And this is, I don't know what. So, Scott, I mean, that's where, when you look at these photos, I mean, that's where, so like you said, they're not snapshots. Because a lot of times we will see snapshots. And you'll see a snapshot, I'm sure, later. Uh, and when we point it out, we'll yep. say, this is a snapshot. But these are photos, and they're well-exposed but I think where it is, is it this is going to be into the composition and the purpose of the photo, like what you're trying to draw your audience to, uh, the the viewer to. Uh, that this is more about composition than it is about exposure, the camera equipment, the gear. So that's yep. what I would say about those. All right, let's look at the next one. Uh, this next one, we'll, we have three images. I had to open them in camera raw so you can see them large enough for whatever reason they were very small. So here's our first one, and our second one, and our third one. It's, it's interesting because they're all so completely different. You have a still life, you have a portrait, and then you have kind of a fine art. So I really, I like this one the best. Me too. I think the lighting is interesting, and the shapes are interesting, and it's just, I think the light is really very interesting. I don't know if you... I don't know if you used flash or you did light painting or whatever. This is interesting, though. It's a very interesting one. This is kind of nice in that it's kind of moody and the, the atmosphere is kind of moody. Unfortunately, her hands and her knee are the brightest <laughs> thing in the photo. <laughs> and that should not be in a portrait. In fact, let's go ahead and see if we can fix this. I'm going to use the adjustment brush and we're going to pull back the highlights Oh, good. My, my adjustment brush doesn't look like a brush. I love when Photoshop does that. All right. I don't want to make her hands look dirty. So let me pull that back a little bit. But, and then I would actually go, let's hit new and make her face just a tad bright. It's going to be too bright at first. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe it's all right. Let's now yeah, pull that back just a little bit. That would help. But honestly, I think there's a much stronger portrait in here than showing this full length and and her feet and all this. I'm, I'm not sure that that's really uh, the optimum use of this. So let's flip this sideways. I think we can get a stronger image either here or even tighter. Let's go into here. I think you've got a stronger image there. Well, don't cut off her wrist there. That was a poor choice of, of where I, I cropped it. But uh, I think there's a much stronger portrait within there. This last one, it, it looks like you're you're kind of experimenting. Like I'm just I'm trying to still life, and what do you think? I'll spray it with some water. You, you get an A for effort. The lighting's okay and stuff, but that doesn't it, um, it doesn't really look. It looks like I'm just starting my still life phase, and I honestly think your other stuff is is their fine yeah. art, and your portraits are stronger. Well, so what's interesting, this looks like Scott, you did it is, as a class project. What's interesting, Scott, is you know, so you got the other two. The light is uh, very sculpted, right? And the light on the lat and then on that first one is very f just like kind of just there and f 
I mean, it's not bad. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is these not are not bad, bad photo fo- photos. I mean, they're all great photos. Mm-hmm. I really like the last one, like you said. I, I really, I think I like it because yeah. of the the sculpting of the light. You're getting me to focus on on that uh, paper boat kind of thing and way over this yeah, wave. Yeah, interesting and, juxtaposition and of shapes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of really cool. Uh, the portrait, you, you nailed it on that one. I mean, that's where I saw first is uh, her hands were really bright and he was really bright, um, that kind of stuff. And um, hey, my best buy order is ready. Good. Yeah, and your best buy <laughs> order is ready. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that was last a nice one, little bonus that came in the middle of the And that's what it is, is it was, um, hey, at least you got something coming from Best Buy. There you go. Um, it's just bulbs. So. It's just light bulbs. Don't get excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um but yeah, that's that first one is kind of just so different than the others. And the lighting on your other ones was really, I mean, lighting on those two, you did a great job. So great job on that. Yeah. All right. Next one. Let's take a look. Um, three shots. Uh, let's open it up in camera rather too small. So, I mean, they're all okay. I think we have a tilted horizon line here. It's okay. This is um, Cannon Beach, looks like, maybe, out in Oregon. Yeah. Or maybe not. It says App Beach. Looks like it. Somewhere near there. But uh, it's okay. It looks a little overexposed. I might, you know, technically take it down a little bit. Uh, I think this would make a much more interesting shot later in the day. But I mean, it's it's a guy on the beach with his dog. It's Could okay. Could you crop it I in mean, a little bit? Could you crop it in a little yeah, bit? Yeah, just, just focus more that. on the dog I and don't focus you need more on the... that wide wideness. Yeah. I think and then you don't need all that. Line a little bit too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's stronger, I mean, but I, I just there's nothing strong. really special there. It's just oh, you're walking down the beach and a guy had his dog. Oh, look there. That's but, a nice but, beach but, though. I mean, it's it's very beautiful. But that's a big thing. Scott, so this on that one. Last one. So I'm sorry. It, well, it's a big thing on that last one. Is um, you know, you're gonna see obviously cropping and co- in the composition of your crop uh, does help because that already drew the dog and that. And the and the person in the mountain to where I saw that prominently, where when it was wide, I didn't see it as much. So yeah, no, the, the crop helped, but it it's never going to be a ooh. It's just like yeah, it's all right. Yep. This one is I want to like it because it's foggy, but I don't even know what to look at or where to look. It's just kind of a little bit of a mess. Uh, when you get a great foggy shot, they're really, they're great. They, they can have a lot of atmosphere and atmospheric effects are great. This just like, I don't know. It's, there's nothing really, it's a bunch of ugly trees. It's just, it's, it's, it's not getting it. Whatever, whatever message you were trying to get across, it, it's not there. Now this last one, um, it, you do have a lot of headroom up here that you don't need. There's a lot of, but unfortunately, I don't know how much we can crop this to fix it. Where is my cropping border? What's going on with this? My Photoshop is acting weird. Okay. Let's see if we brought this in a bit. Made it more intimate. It's going to help. It is, it is going to help. Uh, this is a nice shot. I mean, it's a good-looking family, and it's a, it's nice, and I'm sure that they loved it. Um, it's, 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 it's a nice shot. It's it It looks good in that... You don't have, you took it at the nice time of day. It's a nice grouping. Uh, everyone looks, looks nice. I'm sure they love it and it's, it's okay, but you, you, you need to move up to that next level. So you're taking shots that are all okay. This is an okay portrait of the family. Th- this one's, I'm not too crazy about, but I, I like that you were thinking cool, foggy, misty, dramatic, it didn't quite make it, but it's okay. I like where you were going with it. And 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 this is just a guy and his dog on the beach. It just happens to be a very nice beach. Um, but it's it's at the end of the day, it's a guy and the dog on his beach. And it's not, you know, it's not any super engaging or anything, but it's okay. 
So I, I think you can do better than this. And I, I don't mean that as a cut. I mean that as a compliment. I think you, your, your, your exposures are good. You have a pretty good understanding of light. You know, I think that you're, I think you can do better. I think there's better stuff inside you. You need to pull out. I, I think you're, you're not taking as good of photos as are, are already inside you. So just keep on doing it. But the one thing that if I had to tell you what well, Scott, what would make my photos better? Let's, let's make them more interesting. Let's, let's find a way to convey some kind of a message. So with the family, you, you did so many things, right? But I think you could have come up with a grouping that that would have. Now, don't get me wrong. This family probably loved this photo because it's a nice looking photo. It's a good looking family, mm -hmm. and they all look happy and and nice and together. Uh, but do you see how, for example, the 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 little boy's head and the dad's are touching? That shows a closeness and an intimacy that's really nice. Get mom to lean her head in get the daughter to lean her head in and the whole thing gets a whole different level and you don't have these gaps between their heads. Like, I really like how this is working over here. This isn't working nearly as well. And her leg kind of sticking out off to the side there isn't really helping either. So I think you could work a little bit with the posing. Um, you know who's got a great class on this family stuff uh, is um, Eric, come on. What's uh, Tracy Sweeney. Trace Sweeney. Trace, Tracy Sweeney's got classes on posing and shooting families that are off the chain. And I think that you have the skills to take what she teaches and make that next level of family portrait. So if you get a chance, uh, go watch Tracy Sweeney's class. I, I, I wasn't trying to plug one of our classes, but yeah, but that's, that's honestly really the good. thing with the, with these, these photos is um, it is the posing and, um, it is the composition, and the other thing that you 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 could benefit from is um, you can see we always had to crop in, and doing that why you can crop and post doing that in camera and zooming in or or getting uh, more of a compression with a longer lens would help with a lot of these photos move the mountain closer uh, it it kind of make take that fog and make it more ominous it would take the family and separate them out from the background more. So just doing stuff like that throughout your photos. Um, it's, it's like Scott said, I think that's where it is. You got good foundation, good bones. Uh, it's just, there's definitely better images there. There's definitely better images there. There's, there's, there's You've something got good there. Good bones. I, I was there's trying to say bones. that middle shot. I can't do it. Can't do it. All right. Let's go back and grab another one here. Where were we here? Okay, this is a this is an easy one. It's Ooh, easy yeah. because okay. yeah. <laughs> well, there well, there's two things. Number yeah. one, you're just not shooting these at the right time of day. You're at the right location. Absolutely. And your compositions aren't bad, but you're there in the middle of the day where the light's going to look like like this. It's just not going to be flattering. These are not bad, but they're not good. And the only thing you had to do was get up early or stay up late, go to sunset. Go to the same places, take the same shots, and all of a sudden the light is interesting and it's soft and it's beautiful. And this is a way better shot. And this is a way better shot. Now you could do a little work on your composition. This is kind of an ugly foreground here. Mm -hmm. This is interesting back here. This is kind of a mess up here. But again, it doesn't matter. You're shooting in the middle of the day. It's not going to be a good shot. Uh, this last one, same thing. Uh, now, What's nice about it is I like your low angle, but this is where you have to do a long exposure. This is where you have to put an ND filter over the front of your camera to get the nice silk smooth water. Once you've done that, then let's simplify the photo because it's you've taken in way more than you need. But first you have a technical issue. Your technical issue is you didn't do a long exposure when you needed to do a long exposure. So you could bring this in and get a much more interesting shot, but without the long exposure, without the, you frozen the water, frozen water looks bad generally. So you need an ND filter there. Your lighting isn't bad, but there is something else I want to point out. All righty. And it was, 
No, that's it. That's it. Well, I got I, I got mean, one this, on that last one. I got one on that last one. Sure. Um, Cause you're, you're, and, and I'm just going to repeat. Yeah, exactly what Scott said. Um, that's, ex- that's, that's it. But the, that house in the background is really, could be really interesting in the composition. It might not be that you could get there, but if, imagine if you had yeah. Scott said the long exposure technique last. and you could lead right back to that house. And if you saw it a little bit more, which actually might be getting it either in the water higher it's just going to be composing that and that's going to be those those final steps in your photo there's a great photo in here it's just those technical things and then the composition that's that's taking it from not being a great photo there's you something how there, my though. cursor is vanishing my cur- my cursor yeah. vanishes at certain certain points like i'm over here by done and then i try to go over to open image and it it's not even yeah, there. I'm hitting all kinds of crazy start. stuff. I was right. trying to open this for a very good reason, but I'm just going to quit Photoshop for a second and restart it because obviously something is has gone but horribly it's wrong. So. Those photos is it's um, it's the time of day too. I mean, with with that, the light is so important to a landscape because you got to think, um, you know, with a landscape that a lot of times becomes the emotion or the gesture in the photo is the light. And what the light is communicating and that like the first photo, the first couple photos, I've been in that same place. I can guarantee you because I've seen it, that light would get beautiful. I mean, now might not every day, but I'll tell you nine times out of ten, that light is going to be beautiful in the sunrise. Oh, yeah. Because I've been in that same spot. All right. All right. Check this out. We're going to cheat. So it was fall. We're going to make it super fall. We're going to convert to LAB color. LAB. Here we go. LAB trick. And then we're going to go and just two more clicks. Wait a minute. We're going to go to overlay. Um, Go back. They didn't have it. They didn't have it up on the screen. We go back to the beginning. Jason didn't have it up yet. Here we go. Choose LAB color. Step one. Mm -hmm. Step two. Go to apply image. And change your blending mode to overlay. And ready? Change your LAB mode to B. Fall. Now it's too much fall, so we'll back off the opacity a little bit. There we go. It's super fall. Okay, anyway. (laughs) That was just a little aside. Let's move on. But you should be able to fix that stuff. Uh oh, have to go to camera raw. Okay. So it looks like the New York Public Library in a very weird pano. It's like composite. Mm hmm. I love SpongeBob. I don't know what's going on here. It's a, I guess, a toy, and you took a picture of it. Okay, let's go back to the other two that we can talk. Let's talk about this one. The SR seventy one black. It well, it is a is a stealthy black, yes. So it's a matte okay. black. All right. Well, this is not a matte black, but here's the thing. First, you would have to go in here with a brush and get rid of, either get rid of the color, or you can just, if it's blue, move away from blue. See the temperature slider? Move away from blue, and that'll give you more of a color that is going to be closer to what you see in this hanger. I mean, that's like job one. you got to match the color. I'm doing a really quick, sloppy job. But, I mean, job one is if your colors don't match, it's never going to look right. So let's at least get the color in the ballpark. And I'm not sure that's really enough, but um, yeah, that's, I don't think that I, maybe I can go a little more. Well, that's somewhat closer. That's number one. Number two is you put a reflection in, but you didn't put shadows in. And Mm -hmm. that's a killer. I I don't have it on its own layer, and I'm not going to take the time to select it. But there would be shadows. Look at the lights. The lights are above the plane. There would be all kinds of shadows under the plane. But there are no shadows. It's the only shadowless plane (laughs) ever created. Yeah, you would have all kinds of shadows on the ground. So the reflection 
uh, which would be there to some extent. And you didn't actually do that badly because it's a little out of focus and all that stuff. But without having a shadow, there's no way that plane is there. And, and also the plane is at an awkward angle. It just, it, there's no way it looks like it's there. Even if you put a shadow there, even if, and, and at the end of a composite, you need to put some unifying thing there, put some kind of a color uh, tone or a cinematic color tone or something over it that unifies the plane. Cause that plane could not look more stuck there. It's just, it's really stuck there. All right. Back up yeah, here. Um, I don't know. What so, so with that, Scott, uh, there's a class that actually I'd recommend with that. Tim Wallace did a class uh, over on Kelby One, the shooting compositing for commercial projects. And that'd be a great class because he goes into that oh, stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. And by the way, the idea behind this webcast today was not to go plug a bunch of our classes, even though we just did. But the, yeah. these are actual things I would tell a friend. Go watch yep. Tim's class. So it's, I mean, it's hey, more, that's, that's all I'm saying. Is if you want to learn, that's what we do, you know. So, so I I think there could have been a really good shot here, but because it's so distorted and it's bending the room, I think the idea of a pano in this room. This is the the research library at the at the at the new I believe it is the research yeah, library the, at the New York, New York Public City. Library. I think a pano, just a regular undistorted pano, I think would have been very nice here. I think you still would have got the feeling and the depth and all without it being like bowed. Like, look how the building is is bowing there, right? And the walls are bending out. It, it's, it, it is certainly an artistic thing. All that being said, I like that you're trying this stuff. I love that you tried to do a composite. Compositing is not an easy thing. Compositing is something you have to do a lot. I love that you tried to do a pano in here. And maybe you say, Scott, I wanted that bendy look. And in that case, there's nothing I can say. You you, you got what you wanted. I think that you could have created a really pretty picture um, that is maybe less fine arty. And I, I, don't, I don't really have anything to say about the SpongeBob thing. <laughs> I love SpongeBob. You know, <clears throat> he lives in a, a pineapple under the sea. Exorbent. And poorest and yellow is he. If nautical nonsense be something you wish, then drop on the deck and flop like a fish. Okay, so I I, I don't want to discourage you because I like that you're trying stuff. Keep trying stuff. Go watch Tim's class. Go go back to the library and try a straight up pano. And I bet you'll be happier with the results. All right, let's roll on. All right, so they, if I got all of these, I got that one. I want to make sure I'm getting all of these. And that was that one. Let's hit over here. There we go. So that's a pigeon. Now, I, I, I will say this for this photo. I'm going to show you all three. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's hard to get a good shot of a pigeon. So you're already starting in a hole. But I will say this, and Jay Mazel has this saying. Patterns are interesting and that we're drawn to patterns. So this repeating pattern of the columns is interesting. And then when you break up that pattern, it becomes more interesting. And the fact that there's a pigeon there breaks the pattern up and it does make it more interesting. For whatever reason, I kind of like this photo, except there's a glow around the pigeon. Do you see the glow? Can you see mm -hmm. that, Eric, or is it just me? Yeah. Yeah, and that's there's... this is the strongest one too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, by far. This one could have been so good. Let me tell you where you drop the ball in this next one. All right. You so drop the ball right here. You got an interesting guy with an interesting hat and a colorful shirt. And he's playing trombone. And you didn't stay there long enough to get a good shot of him. You didn't get him doing something interesting. You didn't get him in some great moment. You just walked by and went click, click. Now, 
Calibra has a great saying. She says, if you're going to shoot street stuff like this, you're going to have to get used to being uncomfortable to get the shot. And maybe you were only comfortable enough to stand in front of him and get two shots, but that doesn't get you the good shot. So when I look at this, I think, man, you got a great subject. All the colors are working great together with his skin tone and the, the, the background and the brass on the, uh, the trombone and then the red in his shirt and he's got the silver necklace. I mean, how many things do you need to come together to make an awesome color combination? It's all there, but you just got him kind of looking off to the side, playing a note, not doing something interesting. You might have to wait for 30 minutes for him to and, and take 250 or 300 shots to get that one great shot. So you, now it looks like he's playing in an outdoor band, probably playing, you know, in the street for, for tips. Go drop a 20 in there and shoot as long as you want. But, oh, I look at this and I think, man, there was something. You missed something great. You could have, you just didn't hang in there long enough. And this is a, a shot anybody would take with a nice camera downtown. It's just it's nothing to happen. And it's just, eh. This you had some real possibilities on. And this one's kind of cool. So I, I like a lot of what you're doing. And I, I kind of like your eye, too, because you did capture this and you did capture this. And that's just nothing. But anyway, more of this, more of this and this. Don't do that. Okay, moving on. Okay, we'll start here. This is all right. Uh, I like that you did not show a whole bunch of the sky. There's no clouds, so there's nothing to see. So compositionally, it's nice. And you were there probably early enough in the morning where there was nice, nice still uh, reflection. So yeah, it's all right. That would look nice as a canvas on your wall or something. That would look nice. This is kind of a nice shot. Her skin tone, or oh, I know this is sunlight. It's a little over there. This is, it's, it's all right. This is not good. It, it, it is a very weird composition. So we'll start with that. My eyes are drawn to the word Motorola. And this is where I'm looking right here. I should be looking up here. Look how bright all this is down here. And your lighting's not good. It's not in a good place. It looks like your light is too low. I'm looking at the reflection in his eyes. I can see if I can get in tighter. A lot of times you can tell where the light was positioned by looking at their eyes. Oh, come on. I need to get in close. Not that close. <laughs> wow. So this light should have been up here. And I think you had it almost at eye level. It's not flattering light, I can tell you. And it's not. We need some work on this one. We need some work on our lighting. The lighting is not interesting or flattering. His pose isn't interesting or flattering. The helmet, I think, more of the helmet would have been more interesting than seeing this big walkie-talkie. There's a lighting issue here where your light's hitting straight onto his chest. Now, the light is obviously off to the side. I don't think it's high enough. This one needs a lot of work. I think your natural light stuff is better. And I think that was very nice. So, you're, I will say this. You're, you're aware of light. That's good. And I like her smile. And I like her gesture looking up and stuff. Uh, this is all a little dark in here. We've lost a bunch of detail in here, and people generally like to see that where her hair ends and where her coat starts, unless she's wearing a coat of hair. Um, I like the simplicity of the background. There's a lot of good stuff going on in these first two. And the third one, don't send in that photo. <laughs> let's let's try again. Let's. But this doesn't mean don't do that. It means this needs some work. Go look, go on 500px and and type in, I don't know, construction worker, line worker, and look at some really great portraits because you can make a great portrait of this style in this style. 
you need to kind of look at what those are and what you're supposed to be shooting for. This this needs, needs some work. Okay. All right, next, what do we got? Oh, let's see if I can get these bigger for you. Okay. Okay. First off, I love that this is a series. It looks like the same photographer took them, and I see what you're trying to do. So you're doing a, a very cool technique where you put up a tripod, and then you shoot a series of shots, and you compose everybody, the same person, multiple times into the shot. And some of it's working. <laughs> so this is not bad. It's not bad. I think we got something here. The thing that I think is killing this shot is killing it is this, this one down here, half a body, just, just half a body coming into the shot. You just went a little too far. You, you, you should have stopped just a little bit because this one's kind of good. This one's good. This one's good. This one's good. This, what is this even half a person doing over here? Now, also you got this up here, this in the left corner, there's just a wedge of whatever was behind those ads, that's easy enough to fix. You got to get rid of that. And I would tone down the highlight on this, but there's, there's a little bit of a composition problem in that you, you cropped a little too tight up here. It's not tight enough to where it looks really intentional, but this is killing it. This is kill. So the, you get rid of that. I think you have a better shot. Cause look, you got more space than you need down here. You know why? Cause you got this extra person. <laughs> All right, over here, she's really bright and you can't see her face. This one's pretty good. This one's probably good, but she's under underexposed by like two stops. You got to get her into the photo. Now, her color is completely different than the color over here. So you're going to have to, you're going to have to bring in some reds and some, I'm trying to get closer to the color, you, we, we, we're just going to need some work. Again, a disembodied, this is like, looks like something from Walking Dead. You got to get rid of these half bodies like they have in Walking Dead. But I don't want to discourage you because I think this, you had something good going here. You're close here. This one, oh, I think if you could have had a series of him running up all the way, and that would have been the last shot. In other words, get rid of this extra basketball. Get rid of these extra three of him. Add more of him back here. So you're going run, 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 set up and shoot. And just move maybe this whole thing closer. Maybe move them closer in the frame when you're shooting it. And this erroneous ball over here is not helping anybody. And neither is this extra ball. And neither are these extra three versions of him. But I applaud you. I like what you're doing here. It just needs a little more planning. Just a little more. I, I don't think you need seven of him or 10 of him or 12 of him. You can do one, two, three, four, you know. And also, I want to give you an extra thing to consider. When you're cloning these in, set your clone tool or, your, or your, if you're doing a brush, I'm not sure how you're doing it. But try a version where everyone's not 100%, where they're like ghost, 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 like see-through. They're transparent. And then the final one. Is that just try it for one of them just for fun. But I don't want to discourage you at all because I like what you're doing. Any thoughts, Mr. Kuna? Yeah, no, I'm I'm in agreement of just everything that you're saying. So there you go. All right. Well, I I, I like to see them doing working on you can tell they're working on something, and I like mm -hmm. that. I like that they're they're working towards something. All right. Here we go. All right, let's start off with our Crooked Horizon line shot. <laughs> Come on. It's just not that hard. I do like this. Uh, I think you, you did a long exposure. It's just not long enough. It's just, I think you used, what, a three stop when you should have used a 10 stop. Or you used a six stop when you should have used a 10 and a three. You got beautiful light. You got good composition. There's a lot of good things happening here. Now, I think at the end of this, at the end of this rainbow, is a lighthouse. 
Oh, it's some ugly stuff going on there. Yeah. And a camera. Yeah. Okay. Or I don't know what that is. Not a camera. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to give you the points for not showing that stuff down there. But if you'd have made this composition longer, this could have been really something. Your your uh, ocean water would have been uh, smoother and, and silkier. Your your um, skies would have been longer. It just needed to be longer. Just real, but but compositionally, except for the crooked horizon line, can we can we fix that? Come on. I'm gonna start from over here. We'll drag across. Look how off it was. That was quite a bit. Okay. Fix your horizon line, longer exposure. The rest, I think you did really well, and you got nice, nice color in the sky. Uh, the next one over, it's it's got a crooked horizon line, even though it's not a landscape. This is like hanging a, a picture crooked on the wall. There you go. Let's fix that. I like what you did here. Artistically, I think this is good. Now, I don't know if this person was with you, if this was a setup. If it was a setup, I'm going to give you even more credit. But what I would tell you is, if this is a setup, and I think it is, I would do two things to make this really rock. Number one, come up with a, a great gesture for your subject to do. Because she's facing away from the camera, you don't see anything in her face. You don't see any emotion or gesture or anything with her face. So you have to do it with the gesture. You have to do something in there where maybe she is doing the same thing with her hands that it, that is happening in the hand that's on her back. The other thing I would do, and it's a Photoshop thing, is I would maybe select her shirt not her hair and try to match the color of this blue over here this kind of blue with what's going on in her shirt so it ties together even better it's a contrasting color so it's not bad and some of those colors appear in this thing but it might be if you can get closer to that blue to tie everything a little closer together. That's just a five second stab at it. But anyway, but I think the other stuff would really make a bigger difference. And lastly, this is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. One of the best pictures we've seen today. The light is lovely. Mm -hmm. The flower is lovely. This is beautifully carried out. This is a gorgeous shot. That should be hanging on your wall. You should sell that. That's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that, there you go. that shot, Obviously, a, that a shot's talented great. Photographer. Isn't that, that something? That first one, that first one um, has a lot of potential. I mean, I agree with yeah, what you're does. saying. I mean, I think uh, maybe if you could have like um, one, I think a stronger kind of vignetting or kind of drawing you to that center point, or even maybe even getting lower to the rocks, maybe getting a little lower and kind of like hey, not putting try. that horizon line. Uh, where it is right in the um, middle. Yes. yeah that's a good point that could have helped let's do that let's do that let's go a little more like this that has that has a lot of potential there i love the colors you know what though the sky is better than the, the rocks. sky is better so than the rocks then we got to straighten that horizon line because i can't even think with that thing hang on then what you could do is what Mimo does. Mimo will take a gradient. This is Mimo Madani. Mm -hmm, and come yeah. in from this side. And then he'll do another gradient and come in from the other side. I don't know. And that Scott, kind of I focus. I can't. I, maybe Jason can tell us. I can't see what you're what you're doing now. I don't know if something happened oh, with right. Photoshop. Uh oh. Well, I don't. Photoshop's working. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what Bring happened it back on up our side. Get caught up. I'll, I can. No, it just stuck there. Yeah, now there it is. But I mean, yeah, but right there, how you, uh, well, now it's back to it. I don't know what's going on. So, all right. Well, let me see if I can do it from here. Let's see. See if we see the camera raw window open. Yeah. There it is. There we go. It's, okay. So, what we did was, I, I, I'm going to erase them now so you can see. Uh, Where's the pins? 
I think you opened yeah. it up again. Did you? Oh, maybe. Let me re see if I can reset it. Hang on. This might need a reset. If Oh, no, that's the defaults. So what I did was I took a gradient tool and I dragged it from the left over to darken that area. Mm -hmm. See if you see that. I do. And then we took one from now that's but you're seeing a double application of it now. But you see how you're dark in the left and the dark in the right, and it focuses because that's what Eric was saying when he was yeah, saying that focusing focus them, like... your eye. Yeah, so that 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 just focuses it it better. So yeah, and then that that's, that's a couple things. That... And then honestly, like what Scott said with that first one is a little longer, and it would have been money. Yep, <laughs> it just would have been money. It was like so perfect. Would have been money. Um, and all that all that is is just adding some stops of ND. You know, so yeah, you can just expert. Yeah, I always tell people in my current seminar tour, I talk a lot about neutral density. Well, I don't talk a lot about it. I talk a, a segment on neutral density. And I said, if I was going to tell a friend, look, you're going to get a neutral density filter, I would say, you got to get two. Now, I give them a brand that is really, really good. That's half the price of all the popular ones. And Eric and I both use them. Uh, it's Haida, H-A-I-D-A. -A. And it's one we learned from Mimo Madani. I just mentioned Mimo a moment ago. Uh, he's the guy that turned us on to him, and they are absolutely fantastic, and they are yeah. half price or less than the popular brands, and the quality is outstanding. And I would tell them, buy two. Get a three-stop for when it's, you know, a waterfall or something in the forest, and then you get a 10-stop when you need to use it for other things, and then you can take the 10 and the 3 and screw them together when you need a 14-minute exposure. You didn't need a 14-minute with that thing, but you needed a six minute. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at another one. So this looks like the uh, chains in the garden. These are the chains that are keeping you from walking into the garden to get the lily. Now that's interesting. And well, that's okay. All right, I, I think the clear winner is, is this shot. You know, we, we talk about capturing a moment, and I love mm -hmm. the fact that the, the woman looks so joyful, the birds are there, and everyone's looking at what's going on. Like, everyone is engaged in, you know, it's one of those, I like, caught the right moment shot. It's a messy shot. It's it's messy. Uh, and her, her face is blown out on this one side. I would try to fix that. I don't know if you can. Sometimes it's lost in the camera. Let's pull back the highlights a little bit. You can do it a little bit, but it, it is messy, but there's no way to crop it to, to make it less messy, but it's an interesting photo. It's one that I would stop and look at, and that's kind of interesting. Uh, this, that's okay. I mean, it, it's a chain. I don't know how awesome it was going to be. Uh, and this last one, it, it's nice. It's essentially a photograph of somebody else's art. So that's not quite as nice that it is. And you've got a serious glow going on there. Let's open it up and you'll see what I mean. Yeah, it's very, very processed. Very processed. See that white glow? Yeah, I mean, it's got a lot of processing. I don't know if they went too far, but you see that glow? Can we get rid of that glow? Here's how you get rid of that glow. Because that glow has got to go. Go get the clone stamp tool, right? It's been in Photoshop for 30 years. Go change your blend mode up here in the bar to darken. What that tells Photoshop is, I'm going to hold the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows. I'm going to click over here. When I switch that mode to darken, it says only affects pixels that are brighter than where I just Option clicked. So if you're on a Mac, it's Option click. If you're on a Windows, it's all click. And when you paint, it will only affect the glow and not the statue. That's what you got to do. All the way around, all that glow, you're going to click to the left or right of it and get rid of all that awful glow. Okay, that's it. I'm doing a really hack job of it, but you get the idea. And through the feet. And it's not going to erase the statue, which is what's so wonderful about this, this technique. On the sides over here, all that. Okay. All right. That's the idea. 
overall, they're not bad. None of them are bad. You're, 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 you've obviously got some skills for sure. No doubt. Um, this one was a really great moment you captured and I would love to see more of that. This is nice. And that's nice. They're both nice. That's really interesting. People love to look at things that are really interesting and different. Those are, those are pretty cool. All right, we'll do one or two more and then we'll catch a quick break. Let's take a look at these. These are really nicely done, all three of them, and they're very different. I really do like this. This is kind of a put together shot, but good job. A lot of depth and it's interesting and you're kind of looking into a picture of a, you know, the repeating pattern with the flowers. This is a thought out. Somebody really thought about what they were doing here. And I think that's just an interesting fine art type shot. Uh, this is great. It's like maybe a husky. And this is a very nice still life. It's like textbook still life. An interesting composition. I love the, the thing that it's on, the slate or whatever it's on, and the darkness and the drama and the lighting. And this is nice. It's a nice still life. Very nicely done. Oh, we already saw that one. All right, some sports. We'll start with this one. So I like this. Uh, it is a peak moment of action. She is, you know, at the, uh, you know, at, at the top of the hurdle. Her, she's engaged. Her face, the whole nine yards. It's a nice. It's nice. I hate to say this. I think it's crooked. I think I would have to tilt it. I hate to say it. I think I, have, I would have to rotate this just a tiny bit. Let's go over here to, and let's just rotate it. Just a little to where those, yeah. Yep. Where the yep. hurdles look yep. straight. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's, um, just, it's, but it's, it's not crooked enough. It, it would have, it, it's, it, it would have to be artistically like different, but, just doing that really pulled it together. Yeah, maybe a little bit more contrast, but that, okay, that's number one. But that I like the peak moment of action. So this is a nice shot. I just think you're seeing more than you need to, right? What what good is this all doing down here? His knee, his butt. Do I do I need to see all that? I think that you have a stronger shot in here by cropping it like this. Mm -hmm. that's a much, much stronger mm -hmm. shot. Get his elbow in there and all. And it just, you're not getting so much butt and knee and all this other stuff that doesn't matter. That's what matters right there. You got a great moment and a great expression. Everyone's fighting for the ball. I like it. And the third one, it looks like you got an injured player. She's helping her off. It's crooked. <laughs> It's we, crooked. We got to do a class here on how to straighten your photos. Straighten photos. But you know what it is? I don't know if there's not a stronger shot in there too, Eric. Yeah. Once it's straightened. A lot Hang of on. times uh sports photography uh cropping is um is is everything. definitely something <laughs> that you have to do. Yeah, everything. Exactly. Um it is All a right, good shot. Let I mean, me ask you. That's, that's Does that still tell the story? I mean, if that I, is yeah, the story. I mean, if you maybe brought in, I mean, the only thing is. In pain. The, yeah. I mean, maybe the basketball hoop because you got basketball. If you could keep the hoop in, maybe. I mean, it might be a little too wide Let's if see. you kept the hoop in. Well, he, yeah, because then, then you have to go yeah. kind of like. This. Then I got to go too and much and then it's going to be awkward. That's not as bad. It's still better yeah. than what we had. 
but again, that just might that's a, that's one of those where you're taking a shot to communicate like that's a photojournalism like hey the editor's like this yeah. player got hurt and we really need to show a shot of the player getting hurt. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's where that's the cool other ones are more. Carrying around the board and all. Yeah, good photographer though. I like you like the work here. Yeah. let's do one more yeah. and then we'll, then we'll take a break. Oof. All right, so we have one really, really good shot. Yeah. I mean, that's it by two okay shots. <laughs> yeah, that middle shot. Yeah, wow. That's really nice. I mean, you've got the the zebras and the and the birds and the sun and the Yeah, I mean, All right. the circle of life is coming. Circle <laughs> <laughs> it's this is life. just, and then what happened here? Come on! No, no, don't do that. No, no. I mean, this is okay. It's way underexposed. Like that's closer. Oh, but if you got to the left there a little bit and well, got that big yeah. weird honking rock out of yeah. the right. Yeah, this big old honking rock. Yeah, I mean, there's. Yeah, there, I, there's I, I, I would walk to the left down there. I can see the shot. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I, you know, I wish I was there. I could step over a little bit. Well, look, that's better. That's better. That's better. Hey, should, I, should I fix the horizon line or should I leave it crooked? Oh, no. We like crooked horizon lines. <laughs> anyway, already got you that. could do some work in post to help this, I think. And and I'm looking on on the broadcast screen. It looks much brighter than what I'm seeing on my screen. It still seems dark on mine. But I mean, still. but here's the thing. This is a fine shot. It's okay. You needed a much longer exposure. This is all about you were there on a really beautiful sky night. That's all this shot's about. All right. This shot is special. This next shot. Not that one. This one. Now, it looks brighter on the screen that I'm seeing broadcast. It's dark and a little a, a little more interesting on my uh, laptop. And this is just kind of a couple of trees, and it's just, I don't even know where to look or what the subject is. Or it's that's just, just a mess. Not even, that's so, not even the photographer. That's not even, I mean, that's, yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, like, but that is. Lose, look, lose you're that. capable of taking this shot. So, more of this, less of this. And this is is okay. But you're you're completely relying on the sky, but you didn't get that long exposure of the water. And you have a long exposure, like you're at f twenty two and it's late in the day, but you needed like three minutes and you or or at least thirty seconds, and you it looks like you got six seconds. Let's see if it shows what you got. Sometimes you can see the XF data and it'll tell you. Let's go see. Uh, you were at 2.5 seconds. You needed a lot more and you were at F 22. How I, I nailed that number. All right. You were at F 22, but two and a half seconds ain't going to get us there. We need, I said six seconds. Now I'm thinking 12 seconds. <laughs> you need to get that water soft and silky and all that stuff. But anyway, yeah, I mean, I obviously mean, I, you got some, good, some skills here. Well, here's the thing, Scott. So, they're shooting at the right time of day on that first one, definitely. That yep. middle one, the, second. the only the the middle one's awesome. I just wish there wasn't so many um, butts in the shot. That's the only thing. But sometimes know, with the with the things. wildlife shots, I mean, you got to get what they give you. You know, you can't direct them. But that yeah, would be not, just yeah. yeah. You know what though, Eric? What the, the one thing I kind of like about it even though it's a lot of butts, because my first thought was it was a lot of butts. It's kind of like the day is done and they're going back to go yeah, to their yeah. camp. They're going back to the hot They're yeah. going. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, in it's, I, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. But there is just, it'd be nice if they were just coming the other way or something. But I don't know. I know what you're saying. All right. All it's right. I keep saying shot. one last one, but we're 
last one, and then we'll take a break for a minute. All right, here we go. All right, well, you, you have an, a, ver, a very accomplished photographer here, right? Their lighting looks very professional, very classically lit and all that stuff. I, I don't know what was what's going on here in the background as far as what the subject wanted because it's kind of disturbing and sad, but it's well carried out. <laughs> so maybe she was doing a book cover and, and, you know, was talking, I don't know, the voice is in her head. But as far as... How was this carried out lighting wise, composition wise, post processing wise? It's all on the money. Uh, same thing here. I don't know if you need quite so much headroom, but still very nice. And anytime we see hand sanitizer that's in stock, it's nice. <laughs> and this is just, again, very nicely lit, nice portrait. Um, he's not doing anything particularly interesting. It's not, you know, but you could knock down that hand just a, just a quarter. Yeah. The hand. Yeah. True. Uh, technically though, right on the money, like you really have got the skills, you know, you've, you've, you've got all the photographic, mm -hmm. everything that you need. Mm -hmm. If you want to make more interesting portraits, just more interesting subjects and more interesting, um, facial expressions. Cause, uh, but I mean, they're not, it's all good. It's, it's, there's, there's not much I can say here. Cause you're, you're obviously, you really know your stuff. Your lighting is very nice. You're keeping clean backgrounds. You know, you're just a very accomplished photographer. So keep up the good work. But if you want to make more interesting portraits, you're going to have to get some more interesting, either people that are just have more character or doing something, giving you a little bit more, you know, he's not giving you anything. He's just kind of like this. I don't know how much that's going to light the world on fire. Okay. Let's take a break for a minute. Uh, we, we've got uh, some interesting stuff coming up. We've got some more images and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go get a power cable because <laughs> there we go. I can see, how is it that I have a, a laptop that's battery only lasts an hour and like four minutes? Cause I was at a hundred percent. So now I got to uh, do a lot of, a lot of Lightroom Photoshop. So when you get in there, that's it should last more than an hour. I'm not even at full brightness. I'm not yeah. even at three quarters brightness. Come on. Let's take a break. We'll be right Let's back. Install till I get my thing plugged in. So go one up on Eric. If you don't see me looking happy and everything, go one up yeah, on Eric. Yeah, go back to me. Back. I'll talk about... Uh... You know how you've been saying to yourself, I would love to get really good at Lightroom. I would love to get super organized and really learn how to edit my images like a pro. And I want to learn how to print from Lightroom and work with presets and plugins and all these things that the pros are doing. But I never have the time. Well, now that we actually have the time, we've got the solution. And it's one we're really excited about because it's a live online learning experience. And creating live events, that's our jam. We're the same folks who've been producing the annual Photoshop World Conference since back in the 90s. And today we're launching a new live learning experience for Lightroom users everywhere, and we want you to be a part of it. So come and join us for the Lightroom Conference. It's a live two-day multi-track conference, and it's delivered completely online, so no matter where you are in the world, you can be a part of it. We have brought together the best Lightroom instructors in the world, including trainers like Matt Kluskowski, Rob Sylvan, Christy Shirk, Terry White, Serge Ramali, and the editor of Lightroom Magazine and the author of How Do I Do That in Lightroom? That's, that's me, by the way. <laughs> Look, you're gonna learn more about Lightroom in just two days than you ever thought you could. Plus, you'll have exclusive on-demand access to the entire conference afterwards. So you can go back and rewatch any session again or watch sessions that you might have missed during the two-day event. We'll also have late night sessions on the best Lightroom plugins, one-on-one -on -one Q and A's with our instructors and lots of fun surprises along the way. Best of all, we've made this entire conference super affordable so anybody anywhere can join in. So come spend a few days with us and focus on something really positive, on being creative, on growing your skills, on getting totally immersed in learning and laughing and supercharging your Lightroom skills. You can sign up right now for the Lightroom conference at kelby1live.com and then we'll see you there May 5th and 6th, 2020 as the world's best instructors come together 
for this unique Lightroom learning experience. And we'll see you online. Every serious photographer needs an online portfolio. It's kind of like it's the thing, right? You don't have to have a printed one anymore. It's nice. But what's really critical is that you at least have an online portfolio. Everybody needs one. Problem is they're expensive. You gotta pay for them, you gotta sign up for them, and now you're paying another monthly fee. What if I told you you don't have to do that because it's already included in your Adobe Creative Cloud subscription? That's right, if you've got the Lightroom and Photography plan or the full Creative Cloud, you're already paying for a beautiful online website. Choose a theme, you got a bunch of cool themes. In fact, take a look. If you go to myportfolio.com and click on examples, they show you a bunch of other photographers and designers websites that are already there. And if you see one that you like, it'll even tell you what theme to start with. So you choose your theme, you upload your images, you add your text, you hit publish, and it's live. You're already paying for it, and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how to do it. You can upload your images from your computer, you can go straight from Lightroom, you can add video, you can do so much. You're gonna be blown away at what you can do, and you're gonna be thrilled to know it doesn't cost you a penny more than you're already paying. So it's included in your Creative Cloud subscription. I'm gonna show you how to unlock this thing. You can have it up and running tonight. So go catch my brand new class on creating your online portfolio using Adobe Portfolio. It's exclusively at Kelby One. I have the power. You have the power. I the power. All right, so hey. we can do more critiques. Let's go. All right, we got a really good one here. We got a good one. Right. Ready? All right, take a look. Ooh, yeah. I mean, the light, this looks like a painting. Yeah, I mean, and, and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, this is anything. close. This last one is close to yeah. Yeah. So this I mean, this is really close. You you have an she's in a really awkward pose. <laughs> you got the dramatic sky. You got the weird stuff. This one's it's still good. It's still really good. This is a really good photographer. This is a photographer who's working hard to make the shot. None of this just happened. This is like planning and really just really well done. This is so good. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're doing a great job. That's all I got to say. Yeah. But I mean, here's you're... what I want to say to you about this shot. Yes, so I'm going to turn you on to, and you may already know this person, uh, JB Sally. So, at Sally Photography, S A L L E E Photography on Instagram. And he is the master of doing the cool red dress shots. So, go check out their work. Their red dress stuff is really, really good. It's that epic red dress stuff. Like, look at this. You got the red dress and you have the epic location. We just got to get the poses down. So there you go. See that, that pose is down. So yeah, you got to get those poses and stuff. But outside of that, really nice stuff. So well done. Good, good, good good slash good we'll just look at a few more because i know we're 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 about a, an hour and 15 minutes into this look at these you, you still with me eric yeah no i'm i'm here 
All right. Now, now this photographer, I will tell you this, and this is, I'm just speaking to this photographer. These are very, very nice shots. Uh, they're, they're, they're using good technique. They're in there tight and, and you're seeing these birds in an environment that you normally wouldn't, you know, get to be this close. Very well done. They almost have some of them have an assist, a cinematic look to them. That being said, I'm going to talk to that photographer. So this photographer didn't, didn't send me three photos. They said, here's a link to a bunch of my photos. And, and they were all this type of shot and they had some parakeet shots and stuff. Um, I, I picked what I thought were your three best since you didn't pick them. Uh, but I generally don't do that. Uh, cause usually if someone sends me 40 photos, I'm out cause I'm looking at hundreds. I just don't, it takes hours to go through these. I've been doing this all morning since early in the morning. Um, but you have other photos there that they're like the very first photo you have and your opening photo should be awesome is, is, is not awesome. It's, it's an eagle with a stick in its mouth. And there's just, there's a bunch of photos around these that if you got rid of the, the ones that aren't so great and just left the ones that are at this level, like you have a really nice shot of an eagle with a, their wing cut off and stuff. It's like, come on. So you have some really, really great stuff. If you, let's say that you sent me 40 photos. If you had sent me 10 or 12 and you got rid of the other 24 that weren't that great, I'd have thought, I would have been like, this guy's unbelievable, just crazy. But I saw your bad stuff too. Like you had really good stuff and some okay stuff and some parakeet stuff. It was like, so just so the, this person knows who they are and their name's not here anywhere. But you've got some great stuff. Get it down to your great stuff and get rid of the second rate and third rate stuff. And you'll really have something. But, you know, obviously you're capable of taking some just storytelling shots. I mean, that's a, th these shots um, are, are really kind of incredible. I mean, they at first I was trying to figure out if they were composites because it is so like cinematically perfect you know yeah this like certain... looks really like something out of a movie right yeah like that one is the one that yeah, like i, I saw it first and i'm kind of like wow i mean if if you captured that moment that i mean that is hard that right. is Eric, hard here's the interesting thing about this photographer yeah. i could pick three photos from what they sent and we would tear them to shreds yeah yeah, you could see like ones I'm that having, you go, oh, this is all wrong. And why, yeah, something thing. around I mean, the it's, something around the talons on that one has got me like like um, just weary. But but again, oh, right it's great there? great photo. Well, yeah. they could have dropped in Scott. Ooh, I think you might be onto something there. Yeah, something's there. Yeah, something's there. But anyways, they did a great job about right. dropping in something or. Or, or composing something. I mean, yep. they definitely made a photo, which I'm fine with. I'm totally fine <laughs> with. Uh, but um, yeah, which actually that brings up a question I had here, which I did want to ask you that Don asked is if it's okay to replace the sky, uh, Scott, then is it okay to fake the sunrise or sunset? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> That's a very hard thing to do unless you replace the sky, replace the sunset. Uh, I know that Serge Romilly does has a class that he does not for us, but his own class on making day look like night. Did he do a class like that for us? He's done stuff like that. Yes, I mean, in yeah, his but class he, he did a whole where... class on his own like that, and uh, he does as well with it as anybody about taking a daylight shot and make it look like night. But it's it's not easy to because. You can change the colors, but you can't change the position because what, what people don't realize is one of the reasons why sunset is so awesome is the sun isn't way up in the sky because it's at an angle. You get a, a directional light and a softer light because the, the, the little sun is literally lower in the sky. I don't know how you're going to fake the position of the sun. Like, remember the guy earlier we looked at, or the woman we looked at earlier, and all of her shots were taken in the middle of the afternoon? Mm hmm. You're not going to be able to change the light. No. I can make it darker, softer, more yellow. I can make it blue. I can make the color like sunset. I can make the color like sunrise. The light is not going to be, it's going to be middle of the day light. It's never going to look quite right. 
And and at that point, that's where you go. Just go four hours later, and yeah, you wouldn't have to do, do right. any work in post. <laughs> you don't have to yeah, do any work in post. All right, let's take a look at this next one because I think there's some interesting shots here. Now, I know the umbrella thing has been done in a lot of cities, but I really do think that looks nice at night. I haven't seen it at night before, and that looks very interesting. I'm a sucker for spiral staircases, so I already like this. And that's just a very nicely done interior shot. Mm -hmm. I could lose now, the iPad at the end of, this, at the, end of this, the thing. <laughs> that's what's interesting ab about these is none of them are like, wow, drop dead shots, but they're all very pleasing. Yep. And it looks like the same photographer took them all. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, here I might darken the edges a little bit, go to the, vin the FX panel and yep. darken the edges so your eyes hit a little bit more down that way. Yep. But these are just nice shots. They're very interesting. If you were doing an article about this place and you included these three images, I think you'd, you'd have some good shots there. So I, I kind of like their style. I can't quite put my finger on, on what it is. Let's take a look at this one. Can I make these bigger? I might be able to. A little bit. What if I uh, did that? There we go. Now that's a cool shot right there. Yes, but would some cropping maybe to take out the 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 really murky water or and then pulling closer to the action help? You know, I I kind of like that super wide because I think it is a little it's it gives it kind of a cinematic feel, but you yeah. could do this. And That's still keep that cinematic feel. I'm, I'm in there, yeah. Without the murky water. And is it, is it, is it, well, it's, the landscape's all kind of crooked. You know, it's jagged, so, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. But when we, hey, by the way, though, when we did have the murky water, I'm going to clear the crop. You'd have to fix that. Yes. Because that would be your horizon there kinda you have to get that straighter see that I'll doesn't bother you, me. Like now the water doesn't bother me you know yeah. as much it was, where it was murky and crooked it was murky water. all right so let's go back and see what else we got you know what's here's the thing this is a nice shot it's cute little girl the rodeo it's very cute she's got a cute expression and a great helmet and the whole nine yards but this looks like you were on a movie set. And this looks like it's Faraday at the rodeo. So, and this unfortunately is just some horses drinking. It's not like, do you see why this is such a great shot? Right? This looks like a scene from a Western movie. You've got that way out of focus Peak background. Action. Peak action. You got action and you got interesting light. And then here, you don't have interesting light. You don't have the way out of focus background. It's a nice shot. I'm sure that the the kids, the little girl's parents love this shot. Or little boys. No, it's a little girl. Um, parents love the shot. The background needs to be way out of focus like that first shot was. It just doesn't have that cinematicness that that first one has. This one has more of that cinematic. It's just, it's not really a moment. Like, oh, look, they're drinking water. It's not like, ooh, you know. <laughs> like the, I want to see more of the other one. Like, I want to see more of those shots. So, I mean, obviously a, a very talented photographer either way. I'm, we're being nitpicky, but, I mean, obviously a very talented photographer, but. Well, and and actually, yeah, I mean, even that that middle shot, uh, I know because you know my daughter loves riding horses and rides and stuff, and uh, it is very hard to take those shots and make them look good. I mean, you're you're doing a great job at that stuff. I'm telling you, um, I know it's, it's, it's getting it's that it's getting that it's getting that peak of action or getting that story kind of injected into it. 
um, and kind of simplifying it uh, down. But you're definitely on the right track. Hey, here's a here's a great storytelling shot. We got some sports shots here. Mm-hmm. And what I love about this is the angle that you're seeing it. Normally, you'd see the the because of where you have to to shoot from in baseball, you would see the player coming in and you'd see the backs of all their teammates. But her her teammates are all facing her, so they're. Their position was, in, in, they were in a good position to get this shot. And it's a lot of great expression. Everyone looks so happy. You know, she won the game or whatever. It looks, that's a really cool shot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good moment. This is not. And neither is this. Uh uh-uh. uh. This is nothing. This is nothing. <laughs> These are nothing shots. What's happening? Where's the ball? Where are their faces? What's going on? I have no idea. Is this at warm up? Is this before? Is the game started? Did the play just end? You got a runner on base. That's it. What's this? It is nothing. It's in focus. You know what I can say about these shots? Besides, there's a bar running through her body, it's in focus. These are just, they're nothing shots. You're capable of making this great shot. This is a great shot. This should be in the locker room. This and this. This is another person that sent me a bunch of shots. And I grabbed the first three because I just, I I don't have time to go through 50 shots just generally. But there were a lot of shots like this. There was a lot of shots of people standing on base, waiting for something to happen. The play, what, right before the action, right after the action, what's missing is the action. Can't see their faces. There's a basic, basic rule. Yeah. What's the rule of sports for talk? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You've heard it a million times. Two eyes and a ball. I got no ball. If you got no ball, you got no shot. I mean, it's very now, hard to do first, that. The, the first one defies that rule, but in sports photography, celebration is another celebration thing. Celebration is huge. And that is a celebration shot. That is, you yeah. don't need to see the eyes. You don't need to see the ball. Yes, you know what that is moment is. That is, she hit a home run. She's coming around. The team is is congratulating her. I know that all in that shot. And that's yep. what your sports photography has to convey that. And that's why a lot of times two eyes and a ball are, are need to be there because we need to see the sport and the thing happening. This is one of those where celebration wins. But the other shots, they're just nothing in there that that communicates the sport. The last one that you showed, uh, there's the coach cheering and the person, the ump running there, um, out of focus in yeah, the background. Just nothing there. Um, but that's where you got to get in. It, it's probably getting in tighter too with sports photography, um, yeah. getting more of those those peaks. But again, that's where these are just kind of documenting the yeah. fact there was a game. Yep. All right, you want to see some cool shots? I got some. Oof, I can already tell. Look at these. It's always great when you can see it from the thumbnail. Oh. Look at the, these. are The angles, their perspective. And you know the, where the they are? Of, you know where they are? Low. Always low. Low. <laughs> They're all low, down low. That one is awesome. That I mean, look at how the yep. they have the horse from the front to the back jumping yep. over in that frame. I mean, that is yeah, that is a hard shot. That is a hard shot. And you know what? All three of them are terrific. They're all yeah. different. I love the back lighting on this one. You might open that up just a hair. Yeah. Yeah. But now, so this photographer. They won on perspective, right? Yeah. So when they change the perspective, that's a one thing with you know with uh, critiquing photos. A lot of times you'll find if you're shooting with your hands at eye level, just like everybody else sees the world, you're you're yep. doing yourself a dis, uh, disadvantage, right? Yeah, this you're, you're going to have average looking photos. I mean, yeah, you imagine this photographer would be like if you were laying on the ground on a horse track, which you never see that angle. And then when you see it, you're like, wow, look at how big those horses look. Look at how majestic they look. I mean, because they are like that, but you accentuated it by getting down low. So perspective for the win. All right. 
I'm going to give, uh, we're out of time. We're, we've gone 90 minutes. I'm going to give a one minute critique to the ones that are left. And again, uh -huh. we had hundreds, literally hundreds, but I'm, I'm just going to give a, you know, these, these ones I, I, I was able to pick and I'm just going to give them a real quick, we're not going to go in, into depth, but it, this is the lightning round. Here we go. The Louvre, Venice, yep. and Venice again. Uh, all nice, all shot in great light. Very nice. I love the reflections in the pool here. Um, unfortunately, you got no sky there, but you did it at the right time, and it's still a lovely shot. The colors are lovely. Uh, your tourists over here are kind of killing this shot. Otherwise, I like it. Nice job. These are these are these are much nicer than average travel shots. Nicely done. Ooh la la, I'm liking this. Oh yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Very nice post-processing. I love the drama. You could even go, honestly, a little more dramatic. You have such great highlights. You could go a little dramatic, more dramatic and make them maybe a little more dramatic. Okay, but still really nice. Yes, yes, yes. All right, what do we have here? Caterpillar, close-up of an insect. Not crazy about it, but I, I kind of like it. Interesting. You got to fix. It's crooked. It's crooked. Freaking fix it. Come on. Please, is it that please. hard? Seriously, is it that hard? To get the... That's not even straight yet. But anyway... It's a cool shot, though. I, I, it's intriguing. And you know what it is? It's really the light, the light in the angles. This is a very graphic shot. The, the, the round uh, column with the very angular stairs and everything tilting and all. This is a very, it's a graphically interesting shot and what's made more interesting by the old man going up the stairs. This is a good shot. This is a great shot. I love this. Mm -hmm. It is hard to get a good dead tree shot, and you nailed it. That's beautiful. Just beautiful. They're all beautiful. This is just good job, really good you. All right. One minute critique. Finally, finally, somebody that knows how to shoot the waves. All right. Look at these. This is what we've been looking for, Eric, right? <laughs> Yeah. People send us these shots waves. of the beach and the waves, and you're like, no, no, yes. Peak Look at that. Action. Peak action. Peak action. Look at that. Interesting, fascinating, beautiful, great. What is this? This is a really nice shot. It's, I mean, it's nicely done. It's very, very sharp. It's lit beautifully. It's got everything. You're such a good photographer. Go take more wave shots. We've all seen well, the birds. But fast. honestly, the, you're just, it, it's just not your thing. It's not your, Isn't, it's not my thing either, but it's a really yeah. well done shot. It is. It's well done, but thing. do the waves and make people go, wow. Here's yeah. a wow shot. Look at this. Iceland. Iceland, very well composed. The sky yes. was blah and you didn't show it. You got a good foreground. You got good depth. It's an interesting yeah. A perspective really well done and you were there at the right time of year beautiful beautiful sky beautiful reflection beautifully done eh. what happened come on you're the guy that took this or the woman that took this and this and then this you're just relying on a pretty sky we've all seen pretty skies before it's just I know that you see the emotion. It was my three friends. We were all out shooting. It was a great day for the rest of us. Meh. Go show me more of these. I want to see more shots from these two trips or that trip to Iceland. No, it's a quinya. Oh, okay. They, trimmed, they they cut you, off that tree in the not sequenia shot. All right, you you overprocess this to death. It's nicely composed, close to the right time. Not bad, but it's just you you, you this the your your clouds have drop shadows. That's you took it way too far in your post. This is nice. 
Um, but you did cut off the tree. It's nice though. I think, and you have a glow all the way. See the black glow? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Glows so if everywhere. you have a black glow, you have to do the opposite of what I did. I did the dark, and I think you have to do light. And you might just have to do regular straight up cloning, but you got to get rid of the glow around this tree. It's kind of eh. And uh, this is nice. I would have liked it a whole lot better without this or a lot less of this. Can I fix that? It's just, it's too distracting. I'm not supposed to look at this. This is supposed to be a frame around the edges, right? But that's all I see. Yeah, it's just too much of it. You're right. It's way it's too, too much. much. It. it needs to be subtle, you know, to where it's not overtaking everything. I think I would just like it better without it all together. But if you're going to do it, get rid of it. It's just too much up there. All right. Let me open Ooh. these in camera raw. Ooh, that, that first one. Dude, is that a killer shot? Ooh, yeah. That, that is. Oh, the that simplicity is... in the composition. Yes. Mm. Yes. Guys, this is beautiful. And the look at the horizon colors. line. Look at the horizon yeah, line. The horizon line straight. Straight. Yes. This, this is an absolutely one of the best shots of the day. Killer shot. Super simple. Great lines. It's surreal looking while it's real. That is just fantastic. This is very nice. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I really like that. And this one I'm crazy about. That would be hanging in my house kind of crazy. This is very nice. I'm, I like planes, of course, and an interesting sky. That's nice. It's, it's not particularly my style, but it's very nicely. It's a very good photographer. Very, very good photographer. Great way to end. Let's hope this last one is as good. All right. I, I'm going to give you kudos on a couple of things, and then I'm going to rip you up. All right. First <laughs> is, no, I'm not going to rip you up. I mean, this is a really good photographer, obviously. Uh, first is your use of foregrounds. You're very intentional in your use of foregrounds. You decided, you know, I'm, I'm going to put a foreground object that leads you into it. Uh, and, and these are all very nicely done. But what's with your horizon line here? Come on. Sheeple. What is going on with this horizon line? It's still crooked. It may be that there's a lens issue and it is bowing. Out a bit. Yeah, could be. And I think it's still a little crooked. I got to just rotate it just a little bit more like that. All right, there's that. Um, here's the thing is, you don't have any sky. So your choices are really dark in that sky to try to make it a little more interesting, add some blue into it. That helps, right? But I think what would really help more is a good crop. Let's not show so much of the sky and not quite so much of the foreground and just make the whole thing a little stronger. So straighten that. That was easy. It was, it's still a good shot. But uh, nicely done. I think we ended on some really good ones there. All right. Well, guys, we have run over it by a ridiculous amount of time. <laughs> but I, I wanted to get to as many images as we can. And since we all have the time, we're kind of hanging out doing nothing. Well, right. there's that. All right. Anything else, Mr. Kuna? What else we got coming up? Anything else interesting? No, I mean, we, you know, we've got the grid coming up uh, this week. Um, you've got, uh, you're doing a seminar in the Northeast uh, this Thursday, which is uh, packed. So that'll be really cool. And then we get the Lightroom conference coming next week. Yep. So tomorrow at four o'clock Eastern time, we do a, Eric and I do a weekly talk show called The Grid open to everybody. It's always open to everybody. It's not like these webcasts. It's always open to everybody. So come and join us tomorrow and we'll have a topic by then, won't we, Eric? <laughs> oh yeah, we will. Yeah. Now this critique thing that we do on the grid, we do it once a month. Once a month, we do a call to our viewers, send in your images and we do very much like what you saw here today, but as an episode of the grid, that will not be our episode tomorrow. Uh, but uh, we just, cause we just do it once a month. 
Uh, what else do we got coming up? Oh, oh, if you want to go to my seminar Thursday and you're in the mm -hmm. Northeast, because it's just for the Northeastern United States, go to KelbyOneLive.com. We'd love to see you come by. Everybody mm -hmm. take care of yourselves. I want to thanks to, to Ron and to Jason, my crew. Thanks to Mr. Kuna. And yeah, thanks, thanks to you Scott. all for taking the time and joining us today. Hope you stay healthy. Stay the heck in style. Stay the heck away from everybody. We'll catch you next time. Take care. See ya. You know how you've been saying to yourself, I would love to get really good at Lightroom. I would love to get super organized and really learn how to edit my images like a pro. And I want to learn how to print from Lightroom and work with presets and plugins and all these things that the pros are doing. But I never have the time. Well, now that we actually have the time, we've got the solution. And it's one we're really excited about because it's a live online learning experience and creating live events that's our jam we are the same folks who've been producing the annual photoshop world conference since back in the 90s and today we're launching a new live learning experience for lightroom users everywhere and we want you to be a part of it so come and join us for the lightroom conference it's a live two-day multi-track conference and it's delivered completely online so no matter where you are in the world you can be a part of it We've brought together the best Lightroom instructors in the world, including trainers like Matt Kluskowski, Rob Sylvan, Christy Shirk, Terry White, Serge Ramali, and the editor of Lightroom Magazine and the author of How Do I Do That in Lightroom? That's, that's me, by the way. <laughs> Look, you're gonna learn more about Lightroom in just two days than you ever thought you could. Plus, you'll have exclusive on-demand access to the entire conference afterwards. So you can go back and rewatch any session again or watch sessions that you might have missed during the two-day event. We'll also have late night sessions on the best Lightroom plugins, one-on-one -on -one Q and A's with our instructors and lots of fun and surprises along the way. Best of all, we've made this entire conference super affordable so anybody anywhere can join in. So come spend a few days with us and focus on something really positive, on being creative, on growing your skills, on getting totally immersed in learning and laughing and supercharging your Lightroom skills. You can sign up right now for the Lightroom Conference at KelbyOneLive.com and then we'll see you there May 5th and 6th, 2020 as the world's best instructors come together for this unique Lightroom learning experience. And we'll see you online.